Yo, 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 sports family, what's the word, man? We back at it again with another episode of Mike and Friends, man. And we got the La Familia in the building again, of course. You know what I'm saying? We got Nate checking in all the way from the West Coast, uh -huh. a.k.a. the Best Coast. Yeah. Um, we got Cook checking in all the way from Detroit, represent. I had to do that today for him. And we got Ken the Guru, man, checking in all the way from Ken the Guru's man cave, man. We oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Undisclosed location, my man. Uh, Undisclosed. Undisclosed, yeah. man. We in the building, man. Uh, let me pay the bills real quick, man. Small businesses, big businesses, man. If you want to take your business to the next level, make sure you check out the Grind Magazine, man. They could build a marketing campaign for your company from the ground up, and they could put you in front of the culture the right way you need to be. So make sure you go over there, holler at Kevin and them boys, tell them that Mike and friends said what up. And, uh, man, we about to get it going, man. We got a lot of good things that didn't happen this week. We got a lot to talk about. Um, first off, man, just off the rip, man, we got NBA back, man. The NBA is back in the building, man. No time, we, got <laughs> we back, man. So I wanted to get y'all reactions on the games, man, on just – on the games from yesterday, just the feeling of, NBA, of the NBA being back and everything just surrounding the NBA right now, man. I'm going to start it off with Nate, man. What's your thoughts on everything? Word, man. Like you said, bro, as a hoop head, I'm extremely excited to see basketball back. Uh, I like the setup that the NBA got going down there, too. So, like, it's not too difficult to watch the games. You know, you still feel like a little bit of an arena atmosphere. You don't get the fans. Yeah. You know? yeah. They got LED screens. They got uh, DJs playing music and stuff for the players to run out. So, you know, yeah. the main part of the experience is still the same. But I'm also very happy to hear that uh, none of the players inside the bubble had the coronavirus. Uh, so that's positive. That will allow us to know, continue. So, you know. I'm all for what the NBA is doing. I think it shows just again why they're the best league in American sports. They yeah. play players well, they players respect them, they allow the players to, you know, uh speak out. So I'm I'm with it. Yeah. Man, Cook, what's your thoughts on everything, man? With the, man, the league back, about man. time, dog. I was your going favorite to player, Pablo Cephalosha is back in the building. Why are you talking like that? <laughs> That's so disrespectful. But no, man, I'm, no, I'm, glad, man. I'm, I'm glad we're back. Got something to watch on TV compared to just random cartoons, bro. Let's get back into the swing of things. I needed it. I haven't watched any of the games yet fully, but it's about time, man. Man, I know one that that's lined up for me that I'm gonna tune in today is that uh, that Lakers versus Dallas. I definitely. think that's at, uh, that's at seven. So I'm definitely gonna get out of here in enough time so I could catch Luka Donis do that to that boy. You know what I'm saying? Get that back <laughs> so in the way. Definitely uh, make sure y'all tune in to check that out. But I'm me, man. I'm, I'm just happy that the league back, man. It, like you, like y'all said, man. It's something to watch. It's something to do again. It gives us that that sense of all right. Damn, it's something going on today, actually, from yeah. other than actually from working from home and doing stuff like that. Like we got other things that can occupy our time right now. So that's always good, man. And like uh, piggy banking off what you said, Nate, um, the NBA did report zero players had a coronavirus within the bubble. So I want to definitely salute the, the players that's down there that's doing their they best to stay within the bubble and follow those rules. Um, like I don't do pull the snitch hotline. Don't call Chris Paul up. You know what I'm saying? We don't need the one eight hundred snitch line. <laughs> off. Just feel me, govern yourselves accordingly. You feel me? Police yourself. I think. Mean, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm definitely happy about that. But um, I don't know, man. I, the exhibition game's cool, but I'm, I'm just really ready to see like when the games actually mean yeah, something, yeah. bro. Like I'm. I'm tired of, of everybody being buddy buddy, bro. I, I want to see you <laughs> go out there and try to take somebody head off, man. You know what I'm saying? Right. But uh Kendall, what's your thoughts on just the league being back and uh how it's looking from here on out? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I wasn't excited to even see it come back because I, I don't feel like teams gonna be at full strength. I really yeah. don't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just think that That's a good point though. I, I think I think that all favors LA. Which it wasn't that it wasn't like that before, you know what I'm saying? Like it was like you That's really thought that. The, right I thought I thought that you you know uh, was favoring the Clippers and stuff like that. But nah, the only person that's really at full strength and full capacity, even like Portland losing uh, Trevor Ariza, the only person like that full strength is L.A. So like to me, 
it's tainted. It's already tainted. So like I, I don't I don't agree. To I and just I, just to just to reply to what you're saying, I, I see what you're saying, but I wouldn't say the Lakers the only team that's that's yeah, I can't say that. but I feel like this style of play is like what's going on is I guess better for the I say better for the higher seeded teams, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you feel like uh, Lakers? I mean, the Clippers losing Montreal Harris. You think that that actually no, gave him a bad chance? They didn't technically lose him. He He'll just go handle a family matter. So He'll if he back. come back and be able to quarantine, like I'm not worried about the Clippers for the first two rounds. I don't care. They good. Oh. You know what I'm saying? They got Joakim Noah, whatever he is. Um, <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> they they got other players that man they they'll be able to handle it. None of them match him. No, well, none think, of them match his intensity, bro. I think I feel you. That, I think that's that's eighteen the, points missing. What well, well, go go on, Nate? I think this is the problem with uh you know like I don't I can't say it necessarily favors either LA team. I mean not to say that every Bradley's a huge piece, but they did lose their best wing defender. Um, but you know like at the end of the day, like the Bucks, they all fully healthy. I mean the if anything, in my opinion. This gives the lower seeds a better chance to win. There's no home court. All like for example, the Portland Trailblazers, they got back two seven footers. They got back Nurkic and they got back Zach Collins, who they didn't have for the whole year. They might have lost Trevor Reza, but you feel me? Nurkic was their guy. He yeah. was their guy. You feel me? I mean, you got teams like uh you got teams like the Nuggets, your best player getting the best shape of his life. You feel me? You got other seven footers like Bol Bol being able to at least, you know, maybe play some minutes. But I think yeah. it's I think it favors the lower seeds because of the lack of, of home court. You feel me? Home court is a big thing. Like a lot of teams, they're terrible road teams. Like like the Sixers, you feel me? Like they were terrible on the road this year, but they only lost two games at home. You feel me? So like if you are a lower seed, I think it gives you the better possibility because it's just like there is none of that home court necessarily advantage. But, you know, like I don't, I can't say it favors the higher seeds. Though. I feel it. I feel it. But it's just like, bro, like play for in the regular season you play for home court advantage like what's the regular season for if it's not for playing for an advantage in the playoffs and i i feel you but i just think that the structure of everything like i feel like it's better for higher seeded teams just because these low seeded teams i feel like they need that the time that they miss would be critical time and now they like these little scrimmage games that's not going to get them prepared to be able to be thrown into the fire and they playing nope. these higher seeded teams. So you may have a night where it's the, who is it? The Spurs playing. I don't even know if they there. I'm a, well, I'm going to just go with the Blazers. Let's say they play the Clippers and the Clippers beat them by 50. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't feel like they, they not the best prepared they could be. You know what I'm saying? So, this. During the regular season, the Clippers beat them by a dub. You feel me? Okay. Like, how much more prepared were they really going to be? That's that's my question. Like, that's a good team. point. No, that's a good point. Yeah. You're a lower team seed. Pick you dip, no. <laughs> yeah, lower bro. Seed. That, you're a lower seed. That's lower what – that's You feel that, me? Like, that's what we missed. Five games in. I said – I always said – Micah will let you know that I've always said cohesion, cohesiveness, and all that stuff, bro, is important. So oh, when yeah. teams is basically just being thrown in the fire and then, like, you only got – uh, X amount of games before the playoff come. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of them, they need more time to jail. And then they, it have been literally players who have not played since all this stuff happened. You know what I'm saying? So but, now uh, they got just they got to get the game. Double advocate, just to play devil's advocate real quick. Likewise with the higher seeded teams. That's you what I'm saying. But I feel like what you're trying to say yeah. is. Though those lower seeded teams, they're more vulnerable teams. They need to be able to play together. So whether you say, well, they they play however many games, they six uh, 50 or 60 games together. I feel like they needed to like those games that they miss are critical times, but like those are mesh points. They were probably at a point in the exactly. season where they were just now getting it to the point to where they could probably contend for the AC. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, shit, we damn near probably done lost everything we didn't had. My question is this and player wise. Like, what, okay. what did you expect you from, from an AC? So, like, realistically, you look at the eight, seven, six seeds. Do you really <laughs> expect them to beat the Lakers, the Clippers, the Nuggets? Like, even you know, though, man, you may, you may got, what, what was your expectation? You feel me? A, a gentleman's sweet? Actually, man, that's man, all I'm hey, listen, I was actually, hold on, hold on. I was hold actually hold talking about the, the, the higher seed. I was talking about the Clippers. I had them in mind. You know what no. I'm saying when I was saying this, and I'm talking about the the teams that are the higher seed, 
Like okay. they don't, they haven't been playing with each other. So yeah, it's so gonna take you- it's gonna take them a minute to get back into the the, the uh game shape. That's so we say the same thing. I, I think it's harder. I, I think it's at a more of a disadvantage for the higher seeds. That's that's what you're saying. I, so. I don't believe so. No, I, I think it's just, yeah, I do think it's a disadvantage for the high seed, but I just think um, certain teams are going to gel a little quicker than others. You bro, feel I mean, what I'm saying? I so, can't say, bro, I can't say it's a, in my bad for cutting you off, Kendall, but I just can't say it's a disadvantage for the higher seeds because when in doubt, we know what they about to do. But like you got teams like Memphis, like John Morant, he like he's really fought for them to be in eighth place. You feel me? Really now that shit can get taken by the Pelicans, you feel me, or the Blazers or uh Sacramento, whoever down there in the bubble. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that I feel like that's lame as hell. Like they gotta do all that to be able to play in to the playoffs, then go up against the Lakers the first like come on bro like I mean, they, were gonna do that, they were gonna do that in 80 game season though so that's my point like you feel me it doesn't exactly, provide but they, they wouldn't have to go through like bro they would like that where they was at I feel like they was gonna have that locked up bro the that they was going I feel like they was gonna have that, sure. that AC like I don't know though Actually, I don't know the Grizzlies get the worst of the whole deal that that's that's a fact you feel me they because definitely they do. three and a half games ahead like you feel me they're the team that gets the worst of the deal by far, in my opinion. You feel me? Because they might have to play a playing game. And that's not really – I'm not going to say that that's fair, but I'm not going to say it's unfair considering the situation. But besides the Grizzlies, they're the only team in the NBA to me that has legitimate, like, complaint about, you feel me, what's going on. Because, But the thing is, for, like, the higher seeds, my only issue with, like, how they did it was there is no incentive to be a higher seed. Like, what is what's the point of being a higher seed when you don't have home court? Like some teams literally don't win unless it's on their home floor. So they, they get to play. They get to play on their own wood. Pause. Like they, <laughs> uh, see, it. they flew. They they own. They did. They, they court in, bro. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> That's funny, bro. That's they don't get the short end of the stick because if they don't make it, I'll be. I'm not gonna say I'd be upset, but you know, I, I would kind of feel a little some type of way just off the sole fact like they really have been grinding all season, and for somebody. Yeah. To in four games and still get a chance to play them. I'm like, like, come on, bro. No, it's definitely mm-hmm. janky. Though. I feel it. It's Two games, a little janky. but not four. That's a long distance. Yeah, yeah. but that, that's crazy. Yeah, no, man. Five months though. Yeah. Would you say next uh, topic? Yeah. I just said five months though. Like it's just it's it's been too long, man. And ain't nobody just gonna. Me. You know what I'm saying? So I, I I disagree with it. Y'all like it? I disagree with it. I, I don't think that the NBA should have – I think they should have chunked this season up. I mean, we did talk about the revenue, you know, that was at stake at hand and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. But I just think that it, there are – there the teams won't be playing each other at full strength, which makes it tainted to me. So, I mean, what, whatever whatever goes on, it's going to be an asterisk over it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's exactly. A lot, and that's, a lot yeah, taking it. exactly. And that's why I feel like it shouldn't even uh, – shouldn't have played. But, you know, your brother uh, – Hold your, on. Your just, guy. Just, just, to, just to branch this off into something more controversial, you think, they trying to, you think they're trying to give LeBron a ring? Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on. We about to go to the next. I, hey, I know, you know, I know I had to go, to my, to, get with I had to, go to my high pitch boys <laughs> on that. <laughs> Hell, hell yeah, that's exactly. LeBron, bro, but look, LeBron got that gym at home, man. Hey, LeBron, he, he got that home gym. Hey, man, come over, bro. You know, I ain't tripping off that. You know what I'm saying? We're going to go. We're going to have our practice while everybody else sitting at home, bro. They ain't, they ain't affording no though. gym. <laughs> huh? Do you think LeBron the only person with gym access? Did you, did you hear what Giannis said? Yana no. said earlier in the gym. Then he said, "If y'all thought I was in the gym, y'all are stupid." Which he got is that true. contract. He he got <laughs> that look. He, he got that contract. He got that contract. Hey, y'all, talk talk up some a little bit. They oh, all in the gym, bro. No, he got he got that contract. Oh, yeah. I, that's what I'm saying, bro. All them higher higher up teams, you know, yeah. said so they got that check, bro. They have been Every in that gym. We'll check on it though. Every team bro, got a I'm talking team about team. the whole team. LeBron, man, man, come LeBron on. got the whole we, team we, we about, money. We're we going to get into that. We're going to get into that, yeah, man. We're going to get yeah. into that. We got whole team uh, money. Any, oh, LeBron yeah. course, any LeBron course to raw that dick up. <laughs> but just to keep moving forward, bro, because we're going we gonna to hop back into that. But uh, 
Bo Bo, man, he just recently had his uh debut, man. He went out there smashing and dashing, crashing, doing everything, getting on the board, scoring, step back threes, crossing, crossing uh defenders up, doing everything. And immediately after the game, they followed it up with a drug test. So <laughs> I boy. thoughts on just uh Bo Bo's performance and everything like with the drug that y'all thoughts on the drug test and uh everything like that. Uh, Cook, I'm going to start with you, man. What's your thoughts on it? See, I was a ball ball believer when he was in Oregon, bro. So I okay. knew whenever he got to the league, he was going to perform well. Hey, that, hey hold on. Keep that up, Rook. That boy is uh, – put that back up. <laughs> hey, man, look, it don't matter. That, hey, that look. that's a young man right there. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 you feel me? I don't know where dog from, but hey. <laughs> bro. But no, I, I always have faith in Bo Bo. So this low key don't surprise me. It's kind of hard not to perform too well when you mobile and you seven feet. So he already hit. So to me, he already had kind of upper hand. But him, but for him to have what that was 16, 10, and six, yeah, that, that's huge, bro. Like that could like the Nuggets may have found their secret weapon for real, for real. like for the long run. They thought he just, it was he, just, he just can't get hurt. He just can't get hurt. I'm gonna say they thought it was Michael Porter. But. That, that's out. That's out. <laughs> yeah, but no, nah, Nate. What's your thoughts on just the bowl, bowl, everything? Uh, his his debut, the drug test, everything like that. What's your thoughts on it? Man, like you said, like I rock with bowl. You know, he used to hoop out here on the West Coast. He went to Modern Day for a minute. Before okay, he all did. Yeah, but uh, bowl, bowl, he's legit, man. My only concern with him is his fragility like he's just very fragile looking i'm not, that's not to say he's weak or soft or anything like that but you know wouldn't definitely need him to put on a little muscle especially if he's gonna play the way that he does because he play a little bit more like a forward as he as opposed to like a center so you feel me he gonna right. need to put on a little bit more bulk with the with the modern nba guys but, i mean he could shoot he could dribble he play hard he get rebounds like he like he said he he won't be too much of a secret weapon for long because people know but he'll yeah. he, be a weapon for them for sure. For and sure. you you said you said a good point. Like I although he is a rookie and he hasn't been able to really play like that this season, like you said, I feel like he definitely needs to put some muscle on to do something because what you gonna do when his matchup is again against Giannis? Facts. You saying like that, oh. that's that's easy. You feel me? That's barbecue chicken, whatever Shaq be saying. Like that's <laughs> easy. But he like, get a lot of blocks, though. I will say that. Like, even in high school, you know, he's never the biggest guy. He get a lot of blocks, though, because he athletic. He, he's very, very, he's athletic. very mobile for that 7-1 play. You, but you know, like, you, you know. That you know that'd be different when you get to this level. Like, you, you cool. playing against God, them boys. Right. You know, playing against them boys, for real. But yeah. um, I, I feel like it was just funny with the drug test situation. But I, I kind of looked at it from this angle. I'm like, what if they drug test them to see, like, all right, we have another potential, like, superstar rookie. Mm-hmm. Let's see if this is really him or is this, like, did he, you know what I'm saying, got something mm-hmm. to So if I was the NBA, that's why I would have did it. Like, that that's would have been my attention. So I would have known where, like, where we need to direct more uh, money to and uh, basically just fund another athlete, should I say, like, just build yeah. a brand out. Because right now, they didn't. They didn't. Damn, they're lucked up. You, you got Zion. Yeah. Know he is John Morant. We know what he is. Now we may have a seven foot whose father is already in the NBA. Like, come on, like yeah. it, it can get ugly out here. <laughs> and it, I gotta grab his charger real quick. Yeah. So I, I just I was looking at it from that standpoint, and I hope that was their intentions. I hope it was just to, which I know it wasn't, but I hope it was just to like. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like I hope. Yeah, it, you know, it's, yeah, you I, know, thank you, bro. Like, the Danny, we need to salute him. The like, Danny Green, man. Yeah, but uh, Kendall, what's your thoughts on like just Bull Bull coming out sixteen ten six blocks debut, then the drug test? What's your thoughts on everything? Do you and do you think he could be a real good piece for Denver? Yeah. With, with Jokic already being there as a seven footer, then they have the the slew of guards. That they have, so well, I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I think uh, you know it depends on his whole mentality. You know, if he if he gets to the point where That's you know that we believe that we we believe he can get to, you know, <laughs> far as like 
um, you know, the 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 player that he is because he is a seven footer, like we all mentioned. You know, he's very very skinny at the moment, but he can handle the ball, which yeah. is a plus. And um, th- nobody's going to be able to block his shot. So depending on uh-huh. how he actually uh, mirror his game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it would determine how far he would go within the league. Because <laughs> like we said, Kevin Durant is a seven footer. And you see what that is. Like, it's like nobody even guarding him, you know? So Bro, to say, this nigga could be Kevin Durant. He is crazy, right? Scary, right? Scary, oh, scary. Yeah, and, and, and it's crazy because he already got a shot. So now all it is is just basically tuning him up. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? And then like um like like we already said, you know, um pretty much all he has to do is uh fit effectively put on his weight, not just put on weight, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But over over this the years, you know what I'm saying? Like make sure he work out, get that strength, because right. to be seven one a rookie putting up the number that he did that's every day you know that that's like a to to be honest i believe that that that's going to be like a, a bad game for him you know yeah, in, in the near future you know what yeah. i'm saying like so, that just seemed like he just rolled out the the hotel bed and did that like yeah you know what yeah. i'm saying like you talk about yeah. we talk about uh two or three or four offensive putbacks alone you know yeah. what i'm saying off just on rebounds layer. you know what I'm yeah. yeah off his own you know what i'm saying so like yeah, I, I definitely uh, expect you know that for him to do well, you know. But like you said, uh, it, it has to be uh, him, you know, take care of his body and 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 making sure that he's not this fragile person. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because they gonna bang him. Yeah, they, they gonna bang him. That's, for sure. And that's gonna be everybody' thoughts. Is man, I'm just about to bang this little skinny little <laughs> hundred pound seven one type nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's how yeah, niggas for think, sure. Man. I don't know. He just got to give him a rude awakening. I'm, I know he's gonna be up to the time ta- uh, to the challenge. You know, everybody's well aware who his pops is. Mm. But another thing about this is, what does this do for Denver? You know what I'm saying? Like Denver is in a, a special position right now to where they have, like I said, they they got the guards, they got the they got the wing, they got the vet with Millsap being in the locker room who experienced mm. success. Man, they they got they got Jokic who who didn't stepped it up and started to take his game serious and lost all that weight. And now they got newfound talent, man. And, and you, we still don't know what they have with Michael Porter. If, if he's able to, you know what I'm saying, to come along and even if he able to string in 15 points. Mm-hmm. Hey, let me ask y'all a quick question, a little off topic. Do yeah. you think that, it, that they going to have to actually uh, 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 raise the rim up the height? Cause I mean no, they yeah, they I can't do that. Hey, look, they, they, man, they be too weird. To that, do that. That's unfair for guards, bro. I ain't even gonna. Yeah. Lie. I think the league gonna be six eight in, in on average. I think it's gonna be six eight, eight seven feet on average. I would have to give it like another ten, maybe fifteen years for something like that. Yeah, yeah. Right. We, we gotta yeah. wait. We gotta wait till we keep adapting and guards getting still, older, they're they're still like six two, six three. I mean, you raise it maybe yeah. eight for two max, but I can't even see that happening right now. I'd have to give it another mm-hmm. few years. Yeah, bro. That, that's what they're gonna do. It, too happen, it will happen though. Oh, you I believe? Mean, though? Okay, so so you don't believe it's far fetched? It's like, like yeah, I, I mean, don't, I don't. Yeah. It wasn't. You got to think, bro. There wasn't a three point line before. The court used to be smaller. Then dudes got bigger. So you feel me? They made the key wider. They made the three point line further. You feel me? So I mean, so, it, yeah. it's definitely not off the table if dudes continue. If we continue, Ben sure. Simmons, or we continue to see the Deontay Murray's at that point guard size, six yeah. five, six six up. I mean, you got to keep evolving, man. Right, yeah. Evolution. But uh, just to keep it rolling, man, recently the Minnesota Timberwolves have just put the team up for sale for $1.2 billion. I want to get y'all thoughts on that. It ain't worth uh, that. KG was recent. Uh, not this wasn't recently, but a minute ago, KG was trying to buy the team, just a part of it, and the owner wouldn't Ooh. sell it to him. So I want to get y'all thoughts on everything. Now that them boys are up for sale, and what this can mean for the Timberwolves in the near future. Ooh. So, uh, man, Kendall, let me get your thoughts on everything, man. And I, I honestly, man, just show you why it's no black leadership, no ownership. You know what I'm saying? Because they pretty much knew that they were going to sell this team. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for a while. Because I, I think that they probably put up a five-year window, you know, saying that if they don't perform in a certain way, 
within five years that they were going to sell a team and they don't want to deal with it, you know, mm -hmm. with these problems. And uh, one, they're not worth no one point two billion. I, I was thinking they were worth more than that. I like I, I would I, I, not I, 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 no, I, I would worth. give you I'll give you the eight hundred, eight hundred oh, million. Wow. Hey, I ain't giving you no billion. Not, not for a whole basketball Man, team. Not for a NBA team. It's, it's a, a It's an organization that you're going to have to definitely restructure. Mando. But, but hold, you know on, what I'm saying? Though, hold on, because I'm, I'm going to let you get back to your point. Minnesota is one of them places that they, the, fandom, the fandom is there. They could sell that arena out every night. There is no, it's no issue like they you got Vikings fans there, you got Timberwolves fans there, and I'm gonna get into my little KD spiel a little bit later about well, in a second, about how they should let him buy it just because he was a former, you know, what I'm saying all star of that team and superstar, you know, what I'm saying so. But they they have what it takes that the market is there, the market's good, but I, I don't know, man. I, I just feel like oh, I'm gonna let you, yeah, go. but it's too much stuff that you have to focus on in order to get to. <laughs> that brand or that status of actually profiting. Yeah. And that's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they might be selling out arenas, but how much are the tickets? You know what I'm saying? If you're not winning, you're not selling no high price tickets like the Warriors. They was just, they was just competing a couple years ago. Like that was a couple years ago though. Like, exactly. They are going to have, and that's what I was telling you about the five year plan. They wasn't yeah. thinking about, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, whether or not they're going to, you know what I'm saying? Like they had to get to a certain plateau and they had to reach that in order for them to say, nah, I'm not going to sell that team because they're not going to sell that team if they making crazy profit, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? They're not making that. They're actually probably underselling the tickets for what they want to sell for. You know what I'm saying? And then now on top of that, they, they get in uh, players like, uh, uh, Carl Anthony Town Towns, who's not taking Ooh. them to where they need to go. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so you also don't really got all the help around. I'm gonna say that's their fault. That's what that's what I'm saying. That's, what I'm saying. that's the risk. That's the risk that the owners are going to have to take once mm -hmm. once they you know inherit you know this team because now, like I said, they're gonna have to restructure it. They're gonna have to make sure that they get the right pieces, which is gonna cost a pretty penny. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So. They got a lot to, you know, look for, look for too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, whoever yeah. purchases it, they got, they, they got a lot on their hands, you know. So, yeah. but I wouldn't do no 1.2 billion. I tell you, yeah. not for some wolves. Honestly, what? What? I'd say 1.2 billion is actually, I'd honestly consider pretty fair, like a, a fair evaluation for an NBA team in like a market that craves sports because they don't have like besides the Vikings, they don't really have like other sports besides they got the twins. You baseball, they, don't they? Yeah. But they don't yeah, really they have the twins, but they don't, they, they, they don't compete. They got the Gophers. They got they got some colleges, but I think like you know KG, he should put together a group. You know a group that could buy it. I think that would be something that would make sense. He may not have the majority stake because I don't think that, that's what they're gonna do. They but gonna even do. even with KG, you feel me? Like. The Timberwolves wasn't really doing nothing early on. Like they made the playoffs a few times, but they didn't really do nothing. He was just an exciting player. So like, if you get a good ownership group, you got some. I'd say cornerstones. You know, D'Angelo Russell. I like his game. I like him with Cat. You know, I'd like to see them do a lot more. But with a better ownership group, maybe you get more interest in like players to come live there or come play there. But the way I look at Minnesota, I would try to take the model of like an OKC small market in a boring place that you really wouldn't consider like to live or like move to, especially if you have the salary of an NBA player, mm -hmm. but you do because the organizational structure, like Sam Presley, mm -hmm. great GM, you know, like that's what KG would have KG and whatever group buys and would have to do just get a perfect, a great GM, but you got two solid pieces to build around, you know, Carl and D'Angelo. Now it's just time to fill out that roster. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, they like the new coach with Ryan Saunders, you know, that was Flip Saunders son. So they got history there, but, if KG were to buy it, like Micah said, it would make sense from a historical standpoint. You got KG as an owner, you know, your best player in franchise history. And then you got Ryan Saunders, who's the son of, like, your historical coach, Flip Saunders. So, you know, right. I, it would make sense. 1.2 bill, you know, it sounds high, but it's still an NBA franchise. Anything above that, though, would have been a tax. Like, yeah. 1.5, I would never pay 1.5 for them. Like, 1.3 might have even been, like, a big-time stretch for me. But 1.2 is, like, I could I could work with that. Yeah, and just like you said, like they gotta treat this like it's OKC or Utah. You know what I'm saying? Like they gotta really 
And I, I get what you're saying, uh, Kendall, for sure. Like they gotta really, if they uh go, if the if you buy the team, you gotta really go in the front office, evaluate the GM, evaluate the president of the basketball mm-hmm. operations, and so you could be able to get talent in there. And I feel like this would be the perfect time because we about to roll upon the best um uh, uh Jesus, the best uh free agency period in 2021 that 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 we uh, ever seen in a minute because everybody's gonna be out there to be to uh, mm-hmm. fight the fake, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like it'll be a good opportunity for whoever buys the team. It's a value add situation. You'll mm-hmm. be able to add value if you bring if you do the right things, bring the right people in there. And like you said, Minnesota is one of them places that's dying for a good for a good team just to rally around. They rally around the Vikings. Yeah, they, and they do. know that's the Vikings. Rough. Same thing every year. They're gonna get to about eleven and five, losing the playoffs, and everybody's still happy. Why? Because mm-hmm. it's negative thirty fucking degrees there. <laughs> so why not be happy about the Vikings? Right. <laughs> no, you feel me? So, oh, duh. Is, you know what I'm saying? So, and them, yeah, them and people, right, them people. It, that's how you turn fans into diehards, and, and that's a factor into why I said it's not worth one one point two bill. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, yeah, the weather, and then, and then, look, you got to think how much, how much it gonna cost you to to maintain that arena with all that snow and all that stuff, bro. It's, it's a lot, bro. I feel you, but the people there, the people there, are gonna be there, man. Yeah, the yeah, people that gonna, are, are gonna pay the arena isn't always the team either, so that might not even be what they. Yeah, need true, to. true, true. That's but are they, are they gonna pay them prices? Are they gonna pay them fair prices? Are they gonna get the same attendance? Uh, you know, once they raise them prices, they got, they got to you, get somebody in their box office. And yeah, they, uh, another good on the floor. yeah, because like you know like, they once they get in there, they 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 gonna want to see their bottom line, so they gonna increase them prices just like the uh, Warriors did with that arena. They was terrible, but you know, uh, they was still having to pay. You know, the yeah. high prices. Yeah. That's, That's a brand new arena. Like, they they was buying into what could have happened. Like yeah, man, we don't know if we get them back. So uh-huh. yeah, you, you, you got to get season tickets. Like they sold, yeah, like they shit was probably sold out from two years ago. <laughs> That's real the real. market value, you know what I'm saying? Like they selling those tickets online and stuff for eight dollars, but they don't already sold them to the season ticket holders for like fifty, sixty a night. You know, so mm. that's just mm. the secondary market. But no, Cook, let, let me get your uh, your thoughts on this. We ain't get you in on here. One, I'm surprised, honestly, that um, KG wasn't able to buy the team with his group. That, 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 to me, is just crazy. For one of the people who helped to build up the Minnesota Timberwolves, even from way back then, for them to even be any kind of nostalgia, like like any kind of um, piece to be thought of back in that like back in that time when they had Marbury and it was kind of coming up. So to me, that that tells me everything about the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, um, that whole higher up group that tells me a lot. Well, he's and in the running to buy right now. You said what? He's in the running to buy it right now, though. Okay, yeah. Longer yeah. there, longer there's, longer there's long there something because somebody right. like dude named Brad the Braves who was playing at the Timberwolves. That was just a wild boy. Dude, Spree Spree Will? Will? Yeah, Spree Spree Will. Will. that boy was a wild boy. Yeah, they're they're like, and me, yeah, like, I'm one of them. Like, you gonna sell the team to? You gonna sell it to Garnett or you gonna sell it to Sprewell? You know what I'm saying, like, like, come on now. Who got the most check? That's yeah, what I'm trying to tell you. Never got the most easily. Free, spree, uh, free spree rail, bro. We don't know where he at. God <laughs> bless you. Hope he don't want to be calm. <laughs> Any more thoughts on this? On, uh, on the Timberwolves being sold for 1.2 billion, man. Nah. Nah, and I'm Jeff. If I'm Jeff Bezos, I may buy the NBA. I may buy every franchise. <laughs> I think he just made thirteen billion dollars in one day. I may buy it. I'm he said I might it. buy the NBA. Twelve teams. <laughs> Give me bro, twelve. That's so goofy, bro. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, but no, nah, just to keep pushing it forward, man. Uh, this week I heard something very interesting uh, from Colin Cowherd over on uh, the herd. I was watching it, and he was basically a legend. Like, well, he was leading to the point. That if Kawhi wins another chip and a Finals MVP, he'll be better than KD. That's what so I want to do. get y'all thoughts on this. Is this just pure blasphemy? Is this facts? Is this you know what I'm saying? What what it what will it take Kawhi to cross over and be that uh be better than Durant and 
be uh, better than LeBron. So I want to get y'all thoughts on that, man. Nate, let me let me hear you. Look, man, I don't agree with that statement. I don't think with this one title, he's instantly better than KD. However, I can't be mad at somebody for, for telling me that, right? For a mm-hmm. few reasons, you feel me? Kawhi is a two-time defensive player of the year. Mm-hmm. If he does win the finals, he'll be three-time finals MVP. I'm pretty sure of it, you feel me? But the, the thing about the finals MVPs is – the first one he got, it wasn't his team. Like, he did play the best in that finals against the Heat, but I'm not going to say the Spurs was his team or organization. Like, you know, that's not really really realistic to say. Yeah, but he got, always yeah he got to do a lot of other things to uh, pass KD. Like, KD is the best scorer of, all, of our generation by far. Like, okay. if he didn't get injured, he probably would have the scoring record by the time he retired. But I don't think, it's, I don't think it's too far-fetched, honestly, man. Like, Two MVP, I mean, two defensive player of the years, like that already puts you in a different echelon for small forward. You feel me? Like he's probably one of one when it comes to the small forward. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, like the stuff he do, like the way he's grown on offense and for him to only be like 28, 29 years old, he's he's up there with the likes of the greats if he gets another one. He'll be the only person to win three finals MVPs with three different teams. Like that's yeah, you know, that's tough. that says a lot. And one of them, it only took him one year. Actually, if he does it this year, it's two teams in only two years. You feel me? That's what you feel. Me? That's what I'm saying. Like it, because right. it gets it just gets to a point to where it's just like, all right, like. But I'm gonna have who's, to who's, who's judging this, bro? Because it's like, dude, right. you go from the from the west to the east, back to the west. Then the reason why he got the first Finals MVP is was he was able to hold LeBron. I think it was like to 18 points or something like that. Like, and mm-hmm. that was yeah, 18 point average. And I you know, know you got it. Against the Spurs that last year, he averaged like a dub five. But to your point, he did he did guard the best player and have a good series too. Then, so, then, then, you know what I'm saying? For what it's worth, what he just did, a, a chip is a chip. Even though them boys was injured, he did it. You know what I'm saying? He came, he came through there. You could, I mean, he got he had Siakam, he had Lowry for what that's worth, but he was know. that guy every night. Every night, you know, I can't give it just yet is because like consistency you feel me like kd been doing this shit since what oh six and like you feel me he came in the league as that guy on a terrible team like the sonics were awful bro you feel yeah. me Kawhi had the luxury of being drafted to the best what you would consider the best organization in basketball mm-hmm. learn from, in basketball, <laughs> learn from three hall of famers like kd had a much steeper learning curve so you know but I don't know, man. Like he, KD's just very consistent, but Kawhi is getting to that point where he's been consistently great for the past like then, five then, years. Nate, then just to reply, like you, because you said it, it, the first one, it wasn't really his team. I wouldn't say it was true. true. Them that Warriors team. I mean, I can't say that because play wise, it, it when it when it all mattered, it, they, they it went to the rent. But originally, it wasn't his team. But when it when 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 Bax was against the wall and Knuckles was to the ground, they it was the right team. So I give you that. So I ain't gonna say that. It was his but, team. Uh, sure. It's a hard. It's a hard argument, though, bro. Like it's very close. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hey, say lie to you. I it, just feel like it just before. Take it from on, a Warriors before, fan. Before before you go, Kendall. I just feel like it. I don't. They just need to put more respect on Kawhi's name, bro. Like he, he ain't right. just one they of them. Do, ones. Like I don't think AD better than him. It's like, and I mean, you can't you can't say AD is better than him. Just considering you feel me, what Kawhi's done so far, I can't. Yeah, say people, people think top. People think uh, AD top three. They think no. Giannis top three. I don't care, bro. You yeah, gotta win, top three. bro. Giannis you top gotta three. really win. Giannis for sure top three. Yeah, but Kendall, let me let me get your thoughts on this, man. What, what do what do you think about this? Is this just pure blasphemy? Do you think uh, do you think Cal Herd got a point? What's your thoughts on it? I think he'd be better than LeBron. Oh, if you, if you ask me, I, I mean, this is a person that played against LeBron. He won most of the battles against LeBron. You know what I'm saying? Won. This this is a person won. who won a championship against LeBron. I mean, he Come this on. guy. This I'm is a guy. It. Hold on. This is a guy like Micah said. He said, "I'm checking you." I want LeBron James in the championship. I want them for the uh, the conference final. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I want you, right? So you you got to understand, man, that <laughs> LeBron, I mean, Kawhi Leonard, man, he he's another animal. And take it. This is from a person that I didn't even like Kawhi game. I used to, I used to disrespect Kawhi I Leonard to the play. highest 
level. But then okay, once I see yeah, him, he's a winner. This man went to uh, two different teams and won a championship. Now keep it, keep in mind, Demar Rosen. He was at uh, he had basically the same team. When I mean, he's he not in, a superstar though. That's not even a fair. He, Oh, people were saying that. People were saying no, that. No one ever said Demar was a superstar. He's an all star. Niggas, niggas, niggas was thinking Demar. Niggas was saying he was a superstar, bro. bro. No one has it's ever called what? Demar Derozan a superstar. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, that's all so, that's so, so, man, ever man, said. So, so, that's so listen, man, for real. So guess what? They swapped teams, and instantly there was a difference. They swapped teams. He went to the team that Kawhi was at. Kawhi went to the team he was at. And we seen the results. They end up going to the championship, and they beat a good team. They got Ibaka. They got Gasol. They got some good pieces in that one little year. I ain't going. I ain't but go. they, I them was bro. Like he ain't had they, no real other star. He didn't have no star. Then hold on. Then LeBron. Then LeBron James need two other superstars in order to win a championship. He didn't have no two other superstars. Kevin Love because, is all right. If, and, if Kevin Love is a superstar, then I guess Demar Derozan. No, nah, he he talking about with the Heat. He talking about with <laughs> the Heat. He, talk, he talking about with the Heat. He talking, I'm talking about, about with the heat. heat for sure. I mean, so did, I mean know. Kawhi did too, bro. Tim Duncan wasn't a superstar. Manu and no, Tony wasn't no, he went. He didn't catch Whoa. him in New Year's. He didn't and catch him in his famous? prime years. Whoa. Yes, they're Hall of Famers, but he didn't catch him. He didn't have them. It was his team. That's what Pop was re- relying on. That year he missed those two free throws. He was trying to tell him, this is your team. Wait, this like, is my question. So are you saying ahead. if he wins these two championships, he's better than LeBron right now, or he is in terms of all-time career? Like he wins no, this next I'm saying, you know? I'm saying he he took the throne. I'm talking about is Michael Jordan Larry you're talking Bird. About right now. Yes, I'm talking about Hold right on, you now. Said it's Michael Jordan in his no, 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 you no, no. When you talk, you remember when Larry Bird and Magic you're Johnson – and they basically gave him the throne. That's what sure. yeah. that's what LeBron needs to be doing to Kawhi. In the Kawhi. Like you, you, you know what I'm saying? You take you take over. This is your team. You know what I'm saying? LeBron is a he's a he's a great, but like bro, Kawhi Leonard. If you ask me, fine. he's he's a a winner. He he ain't win. He ain't losing no six championships. I will tell you that for sure. Look, yeah. I can say this, bro. <laughs> I can say this. Kawhi, give, give me, give me the rebuttal, uh, Nate. Before we it go, it is there. his turn. You feel me? I'm not gonna sit here and act like it's not his turn. He's 28, nigga. That's what a 28 year old is supposed to do in his prime in the NBA. You feel me? That's cool. We mm-hmm. over here sitting comparing a 36 year old to a 28 year old. Think about that. You feel me? Next time you're talking about LeBron ain't this, he ain't that. He 36, bro. He 36. Hey, Kobe, Kobe, Kobe was doing what LeBron hold on, James hold on, was doing. Hold on, hold on, let him, let him, let him. Let him let him go, uh, Kendall. Bro. All right, go so, ahead. That's all I'm gonna say, bro. At 36 years old, we still talking about if LeBron gonna hand Kobe for show was not doing this at 36, bro. I live in Los Angeles. Did I, he know get hurt? Kobe, <laughs> I know what Kobe was doing at 36. He was hold on, hold on. When did when did uh Kobe win his last championship? What age was he? 2010, uh, 2009. So that was. Shit, I can't. Even, I couldn't even tell you, but probably like 32, 33. What what made what made his championship special? Versus you comparing to LeBron. All right, I'll tell you what made it special. First of all, after getting spanked by uh the Phoenix for all those years, what he what he did was he actually had a team twice built around him and he was successful at doing it. LeBron James have never successfully had a team symbol specifically around him. Did he, he didn't do that? He didn't do that then beat the Celtics, then get a championship after coming down 3 1. Who? LeBron. Didn't they beat the Celtics? Ain't that ain't that that's the argument? They beat the team that used to whoop on them. Championship. They beat your doves. Bruh, we already know what that is. LeBron that, James cried. Is that LeBron James? Hold on. I'm gonna tell is, you which championship hey. more impressive. Kobe's against the, the Celtics or LeBron and them coming back 3 1. You feel me? Bruh, Let's be real. It's Gotta go it, it's that's I'm tainted really because hold on, that's what I'm telling you. It's tainted because first of all, LeBron James basically cried for a suspension, which oh is the reason why I'm telling you that the season is gonna be uh, an asterisk, so like Michael hey, said. You just a real you just a real pride hater, then because you feel me that's no, it. Hey, no, no, hey, 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 hey listen, hey, hold on, hey, here's the crazy part. thing is. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know he used to be a fan, but you feel me? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's the crazy now. thing, like, bro. Now you just I, really don't like it, bro. I can I you stop liking. You can hit your nuts what you're going to do. Not try to I, get the nigga to 
No, I want to. I want to win at their best, bro. Yeah, bro. I ain't even, hold on. He, hold on. Try to get him yeah. he, he got a, He got too many technicals. How's that, LeBron? Hey. Go hey, ahead, Michael. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Because LeBron did play a role in getting Draymond suspended. For sure, bro. So you, what did you say, right, so Draymond? So Draymond, do you do you not know in the playoffs you get sixteen technicals? Facts, I, facts. So I'm hip. I'm hip. Fifteen that Draymond got before that point is LeBron's fault. I'm hip. But hold on, what did you say before that? You said something about donuts or some. Like, I said if you get hitting the if you get hitting the nuts, you're not going to at least react. You're just going to keep going with your game. You not when you yeah. purposely yeah. did it when you purposely but, but did you it. Gotta, you got to understand this though. This one, this is where we break off to a different cloth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jordan was getting his ass whooped. Lambeer was throwing Jordan out the air. They that nigga wasn't even reacting. You nigga said. Mm. He wasn't reacting. He wasn't getting in their faces. His nah, teammate, he, got he, he wasn't. He wasn't, making, he wasn't begging the ref to make calls, and this was well documented. Even even in that last oh. series that they played, the book, the did, that, that was that was they chipped because they felt like they was gonna react. So he's like, mm, the fuck. But who like, plays? Who plays? Who plays like that in the modern NBA? Give me one player that don't try to get a call. Yeah. Then then you got then you got even Kawhi be moaning, be be whining for calls. He don't even talk. Bro, but That's you gotta funny. yeah, he do this, but <laughs> all being That's ushered funny. in. This, and that my bad, but this is all being ushered in by LeBron. You got the flop. Like niggas, Jordan LeBron wasn't flopping, nigga. When did Jordan flop? Le- LeBron did not start the flop, bro. It started. I'm gonna tell you. Look, I'm gonna tell you why the flop started. I'm just saying. I'm gonna tell you why the flop started for real, bro. Does, bro. LeBron. They started, calling, they started calling that offensive block charge thing. That changed the NBA forever, bro. And that's no cap. You feel me? Like when it came to the offensive fouls, like the freedom of movement. LeBron didn't start that because he never played with a freedom of movement type team. If anything, the Spurs or the Warriors are the type of teams that made the freedom of the movement popular. You feel me? When did LeBron ever play with a team that swung the ball? He's an ISO fiend. <laughs> I give you that. Like, it's, right. it's, I give you that. That's just the of the game changing, bro. He ain't got no heart, bro. Let's just yeah. say that. Just, <laughs> wow. Let's just say, you, let's say that. It, it, it really, I, and it'd be like this for me, too. It really just be on another level when it come to LeBron. Like, I love LeBron. I love what he do. I like how he play. I like all that. But it's just something like, I don't know, bro. It may just be the Chicago in me. I don't know, bro. When, it, you, when it's yeah, Jordan. Yeah, like when it when it's Jordan, like once you once you get to just comparing him to the top dog, and we know the top dog, it just get a little blurry for me. But yeah, bro. get your thoughts on this, man. <laughs> bro, y'all done said it all, dog. Yeah, y'all done said it all in big <laughs> and money, and then I was saying no more. Y'all done said it all. <laughs> do, you, do you think? Do you think Kawhi could be better than uh, KD if he win this year? Not this year. It's definitely possible. He's definitely in that ranking for, for sure, but not this year. Okay. I need Kawhi. I need, Kawhi needs to start. Not that he needs to start. He's already a superstar. He's already been superstar caliber since he won that first Finals MVP. But for him to start getting into the same exact category as KD, he needs to, to score the ball some more. But besides yeah. that, consistency. Not, maybe, yeah, consistency. Maybe maybe like two years from now. Maybe maybe realistically mid season next season. For real, for real. Damn, bro. I think I think coming up that now. calling card, bro. I ain't even gonna lie. The only thing he missed is he's, he's top three for sure. Numbers, that's all. Because, bro, yeah. you, you got three rings and three finals MVPs. And two we were, we, Realistically, it's just because Kawhi's so quiet, bro. Kawhi yeah. is literally so quiet that he, it, it makes you undermine him. But that and is exactly, that's and, and, and that's yes, that it, yes, yeah, and, I, I wholeheartedly, heart, heartedly agree with that because, like, I, that's why we ain't giving him the credit that he deserved when he talked when, yes, when he was talking about it being in San Antonio. Because he, like, to be honest, bro, I didn't even know that he was even on a team, but he was being so effective, effective. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was so yeah. effective, but it, it's but like it, that's like, the thing. He didn't have a spotlight shedded on him. Yeah, and that's the and that, and that was why I was say that. Yeah. Like Tim Duncan, oh. love he received because he was definitely the best player in the world. Like no matter where you play, so, Kawhi, yeah. he I think he really got into that conversation like literally the year before he got traded. Like he started ascending because they was playing the Warriors. Mm. They was up when he messed his ankle up or whatever. Yeah. Not, they would have mm. beat the Warriors or nothing. You feel me? Like that's that's neither here nor there. 
But I was I mean, nervous. I'm gonna tell you that. I, I was nervous. Right. Come on, come on. I don't I'm know, bro. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get them now. They 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 gave them a. Uh, they was up about twenty piece. Yeah, bro, I'm not gonna that they was nah, bro. Because yeah, I'm not gonna. Because Warriors have a hard time winning in San Antonio, bro. Yeah, yeah I'm not. Gonna you had that. Kawhi. They may not have won that series, but that's when Kawhi started putting himself in the conversation. Yeah, that's, like, that, 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 that's when he. That's definitely when he crossed that line, though. To where it's like, that, that uh, that go dude. ahead, go ahead, Micah. What you were saying? I said that's when he definitely crossed that line, and you and you recognize, like, yeah, he got that do it fluid. Mm -hmm. But just mm -hmm. to uh, talk about something that that uh, Cook said with with um, Kawhi, like not being known and stuff like that. I feel like that's a flaw within the NBA. You feel me? Because I agree. No matter if even if he is that quiet, he should still, you know, what I'm saying, be marketed as. The other ones, you feel me? Especially if it, if it, if he playing up to par like the other ones, and he winning, that's the other thing. Like a lot of these, a lot of these ones that they that they pulling they dollar that they putting their dollars behind don't win. Kawhi is yep. winning, you know what I'm saying? And I respect yeah, the yeah, winner. Exactly. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. My only argument though, like, you, gotta, you gotta look at the NBA still as a business, though. You feel me? Like you're not that's gonna market, you're not gonna market a product that don't sell. Like like for example, you feel me? There's a reason why Jordan let Kawhi walk for five million dollars. Like they know he's a superstar, but do he sell shoes? Do, is he box office? Like he's never been top ten in jersey sales. You feel me? Like that mm -hmm. all is a part into what the markets because they have business. You feel me? Same for like Tim yeah. Duncan. You know, I don't know too yeah. many people with D jersey, but you all know everybody knows whoever know the game know that Tim Duncan was one of those guys. But you got that's a part of you. You gonna find you gonna find the OGs with the Timmy D dunk uh, jersey. Make yourself marketable. Here, like, here's that's, why that's I feel like it's that's kind of. I'm not gonna say it's Kawhi's fault, but a little bit though. You got to make yourself marketable. Like you got to make people like who you are. Like nobody really knows who Kawhi. That's not the lead part, though. I agree. I hey. agree to a certain extent. Here, here's the problem. When you get Wrap, constant, up on this one, uh, all right, okay, this, all right. Uh, when you get con when you get constant viewership from ESPN, which is a very big, uh, you know, platform, you get ESPN two, all that stuff, right? You're constantly in people's face. People mm -hmm. going to buy your jersey. If he's not getting that same. Uh, that same uh, media attention, you can't mm -hmm. say, oh, well, he's boring or I ain't going to give him this. Nah, give him and all the other superstars all the, the you know what I'm saying, publicity that they need so we can expand the lead in this totality. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So I disagree when we when we try to uh, uh, compare him to other superstars when he's not getting the same amount of attention from you know, from the ESPNs and stuff like that, bro. The thing is, the Clippers have played yeah. a lot of nationally televised games, like, but you got to look at the entirety of the game, right? So you know, obviously, you go out there, you have a good game, but then the post game, the post game interview be boring as hell. Then he don't have an Instagram or he don't have a Twitter. Like, you're not going to capture. I, like that. I feel you. He, he yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree with that. Most, hold on, I, I feel you, Nate. He definitely not doing his job to be the most marketable or likable person and i feel mm -hmm. that but i feel like he should like i should just get the same opportunity as everybody else the same way they shove lebron in our face and zion and all these other players shove kd in our face pause but you don't think you don't think my bad you don't think if Kawhi like, tried though, they would do it? Like if he had an Instagram, I'm pretty sure the NBA would like to promote on an Instagram, but he don't I'm use sure, it. I'm sure they would because they just don't like that it. shit. It's more money. Same for James Ooh. Harden. Like, there's a reason James Harden not really well marketed. Like you know, he's he don't really have a grant. Like he don't have like a social personality. That's not to say he's a boring guy at home. I don't know. Yeah. You, so you feel me? I can't talk about what type of guys. Hard, are. Hard, Harden being he's strictly a lot. Yeah, you can only mm -hmm. talk about what you see. You feel oh, me? Like, he don't have his own. He don't control his own medias, and that's probably yeah. more so like a, a camp issue than I yeah. see. I give you that, but don't 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 definitely uh, get hard misconstrued. He be out here in no, these streets. Mm -hmm. I can't even say streets. Streets. That boy hard. Mm -hmm. Streets. No, <laughs> just to uh, keep moving on, man. Just to uh, get into something else. The NFL has just canceled the whole preseason. Uh, I'm gonna start this off, but uh, I definitely, I definitely want to get y'all thoughts on this. I feel like this is a good thing. They moving in the right direction because what is the preseason really? It's four free games. These 
these athletes ain't playing for nothing hardly. And they're they're uh, enduring the same risk that they'll have to endure mm-hmm. in week 16 uh, uh, telling like a uh, playoff uh, telling game, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it, they they have to do something about this. And I, I feel like they should just cancel the preseason from from here on out because football is not like basketball bro we we don't basketball you could get scrimmages football is a a one-on-one up on you know i'm saying up on each other sport when you really get down to it and you can't stop 300 pounds a six eight 300 pounds coming at another six eight 300 pounds for 50 plays a game and think everybody gonna walk out of that all good you know what i'm saying Uh, and, and if you do want to uh, have those preseason games, play the pay them like it's a, a, a regular season game. So I, I feel like you know it's just now I feel like a lot of things is uh, coming in the light, and the uh, the hat is coming out the bag now, bro. You you gotta like you can't you can't play you can't pimp these players, man. You gotta pay them for real, and you putting them in the way just so you could sell whatever tickets you gonna sell for these four mm-hmm. little BS games and. You know what I'm saying? So we I, I just feel like it's a good idea and I hope they uh follow this from here on out. Uh let me get y'all thoughts on who wanna go first on this, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell, go I, first. I'll, I'll go, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you don't say you ain't say that much. Go ahead. Yeah, how let us go. So honestly, bro, I didn't think about it from the same perspective as you, Michael. I saw it from the perspective from the perspective purely of the pandemic happening. Those four games, that's that. Those four games is more exposure, more risk. Period. So cutting down those four games, keeping those players kind of not for lack of better words in that bubble protects the players because they're already looking shady right now by protect by not protecting their players in the first place. Yeah. So with this, so with this, it kind of covers their back, kind of they can build some ground back up, you know. But yeah. they still got a lot of work to do. Yeah, they def- they definitely looking funny out here because you got to you looking and that's the thing that the NBA makes it so much better for these other yeah. like professional leagues, bro, because they so like in they the forefront of everything and they so uh, fourth leading and fourth right and everything that whatever they like, whatever other leagues do, if it's not up to the NBA standard, it just looks like complete BS. You know what I'm saying? And like yeah. having these players even, back even in the MLB. The MLB yeah. take care of their players swell. Yeah, so it, some got to give, bro. Uh, Kendall, let me get your thoughts on this. Well, I think it's a pro and a con. Uh, the pro is um, that we get you know um, straight to the season, and we ain't got we ain't got to waste our time with the preseason that we don't watch in the, in the beginning. But here's the con to it. What about the players that actually you know play those games that they see? You know what I'm saying? A diamond in the rough you know, that's actually doing very well, you know what I'm saying? Like they get that, they get the opportunity, you know what I'm saying? To shine and they can possibly start in the season, you know, but um, I I know that that they want to use them and, and, you know, just let they camp be, you know, uh, the, the focal point to where, you know, to where as to, if they decide to cut somebody, you know what I'm saying? Then they're going to do it within camp. But I just believe that they don't really get the chance to see the the full potential of players. Cause some players might be, you know, okay in practice, but then they are beast at, in, in real games. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's just my perspective. And just, just to piggyback off that, uh, I feel you. And like it's time to a point to where the NBA, they got to make real solid like they got to be solid. Now, you can't put them guys out there, even those borderline guys that you don't know really who they are. You drafted them. So you put be stand behind your dollar. You know what I'm saying? Right. Even if it's because y'all getting the money, y'all got the money to do it. Jerry Jones made six hundred over six hundred million dollars just off the uh, the Cowboys arena. You know what I'm saying? Last year. So you, it, it's money out there. It's money to, to be handed out and not even handed out. It's money that they earned. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like mm-hmm. they just got to make a bigger, a more of a commitment to these borderline players, like having stringing somebody along for the for whatever the training camp is in the preseason in the last mm-hmm. game. You got to tell them, you know what, bro, we only can have so many players on this roster. We're going to have to cut you. That's some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's people out here that's that's betting on that money, that need that money, that to feed their family. That's some bullshit, especially mm. when the money there. You feel me? But Nate, let me get your thoughts on that. 
Uh, I think all y'all had good points. Uh, my really my whole thing with it is like, I, nobody really want to watch preseason football anyway. Like, Not at all, bro. That's the biggest part of it. Like, Michael, like you were saying, like, Mark Sanchez. Exactly. Like this might be something <laughs> that they need to do, but. But uh, I like what he said about more so, you know, the guys that don't necessarily have a chance because the NFL, they don't really have too many feeders into the NFL. And there's not really too many other times you can see guys in live game action as opposed to the NBA, right? You got college, you got other leagues, you got international guys that you, you know, you want to, you have game film, like you have film. Like with the NFL, the only thing that they really, really respect is college, like experience, you know, so, like, the guys like, like Adele said, like that don't necessarily have the main name, but they could make the roster like it's yeah. hard for them. However, I did hear that the NFL was going to raise their roster limit from 56 to 75, I think. Oh, so, yeah, like, okay. yeah, also, yeah. that kind of offsets, like, you know, not having to cut as many people. But mm-hmm. you know, down the line, they, they kind of work something out. But I don't think preseason football is needed. Like, no one wants to see a, a piss-poor product. You might as well watch the XFL. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> the third stream, go to the third stream. Uh, ver- if I want to see the third stream versus the third stream, guess what, nigga? I'm gonna go to y'all training camp and watch yeah. y'all versus the practice team. I don't want to see no bull, no BS like that. Mm-hmm. But um, just to keep moving on, man. Also within the NFL, man. AB just recently re- uh, announced his retirement from the NFL, and it wasn't uh motive. It wasn't just motivated behind him just being older, which he's not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was just more about the, the NFL dragging their feet with uh with him being able to get back in the league. So, excuse me, I want to get y'all thoughts on that, man. Uh, Cook, let me get your thoughts on A.B. retiring. Do you think it's real? Do you think he'll ever come back? Do you think he'll ever step foot on the field again? It's not real at all. He'll, he'll be back next season or, if anything, this season. Yeah. <laughs> excuse me. If anything... Him retiring is going to give him more of a time to go, to go in the crib, to go actually work, to go get his head together, to go get his body together. Somebody yeah. will pick him up for sure. Because wasn't he just working out with the Seahawks? Yeah, he, he said what? Right. Yeah, he, well, he wasn't working yeah. out for the Seahawks. He was working out with uh with, with, um, yeah. Right. So, if anything, he'll get picked up by midseason. But if anything, of course, next season for sure. Yeah. Uh, and uh, my thoughts on that, like, AB's box office, bro. AB sales, bro, and that's too much exactly. to not have on the field. So if you're telling me that you could potentially put him in even New England again, Cam Newton needs that target. There's people that need that For type sure. of target. He's sure. a even. Just think about the Chiefs with AB. That's scary. what they have. Wow. That ain't even freaking like bro it's not even fair bro like it ain't even fathomable so uh i i, I put blame on it on the nfl because it definitely shouldn't take this long to be investigating what has to what uh allegedly took place just uh let him know what he's going to do like he set out a whole year so right. i mean if that if he would have got even if he would have got suspended for the year okay he did that let let him come back let him play you know what i'm saying this team's mm-hmm. out here trust me the day that the nfl clears him is the day he'll get a deal on the table. Like, mm-hmm. e- even for something reasonable, for 10, 12 million, you know what I'm saying? Because no people question, know he still sure. got that type of talent. And mm-hmm. he still could be that uh, productive. But, um, mm-hmm. Nate, let me get your thoughts on that, man. See, you had me when uh, you said, like, he's extremely talented because, obviously, you know, one of the top five wide receivers in the game when he's healthy. But yeah. I really – honestly, I don't have too much sympathy for a guy like A.B. Like, he kind of made the bed that he's laying in right now. I feel if, it. Like, I feel it. if he would have just committed to Oakland, he didn't even play a game for them. You know, he allowed like the drama and stuff to build up before even touching the field for them. So, you mm-hmm. know, it's hard for me to really feel bad for some, you know, the NFL, they're usually not a forgiving league, but they tried to give Antonio chances, you know, like a few mm-hmm. different chances. Like this is his first time, you know, uh, stepping outside of the policy. But like you said, he's very talented. You know, somebody should pick him up. But unfortunately, it's, he's, it's not a too unfamiliar case. It's a lot of very talented guys that can't be in the NFL or can't be in the NBA, you know, yeah. just because they can't get their heads right. And that's what I really hope for somebody like A.B. Like, use the time to get your head right. Not a lot of money. Exactly. I would like to get some more money. But, you know, I wouldn't take a I chance. Think- Seriously, if I'm a championship team, I'm not taking a chance on them. 
and I, I think it's like a tragedy that he, a tragedy that he isn't in the league. Like like you said, it, it's it's his fault why he's not in there. And only thing he had to do with New England was not. I guess he the reason why they had to let him go is was he uh, texted the alleged victim of whatever assault it was. So mm -hmm. and, and you, I mean, just as a as an organization, yeah, you can't have that. So it's most definitely his his fault. And you know, I I just want the NFL to give him to give him the same chances that they gave Josh Gordon, give him the same chances that y'all gave Peyton Manny, who has a alleged uh, sexual assault case that stemmed back to the C days. You know what I'm saying? And all these other guys out here that have alleged uh, Ben Roethlisberger. You know what I'm saying? Give him the same. You know what I'm saying? Uh, opportunities and uh, chances that y'all give him. Not saying that. Because yeah. I mean the M the NFL has been proven to give guys chances, so you know what I'm well, saying. I don't, I don't think it's for a chance. I think it's less about the sexual assault than <laughs> it is about like his actual behavior. You feel me? I like feel it, you I know, feel it. it's, it's a little different when obviously you know you got the sexual assault scandal. I don't condone that, so you I should be it. punished to an extent. But you know, you should get a second chance. But it, it's when you start causing locker room issues, you know. Hey texting robert Kraft or you're saying things about your owner on twitter when you just got to a team like 100 that way or not it's just not smart to put it on the internet you feel me like yeah. he's done he's just done a few too many like intentional acts that's just like if i'm a championship contender i don't want to bring him into the mix and mess up chemistry but if i'm a team that i think i have a budding chance to be one and i just need that talent then I'm all for it. Like you said, the Pats, they would be a great situation for him. Like, yeah. I'd love to have him on the Rams, but, you know, I just want him to be concerned. You don't, you don't want to see A.B. in L.A. You in LA. I don't. You're right, though. I don't. You lose it immediately. <laughs> he said, Lamb, I ain't even tired. Man. Uh, Kendall, let me get your thoughts on that, bro. I, I agree with Nate. Uh, we basically said that uh, he, he kind of did it to himself. Cause what happened was, uh, th this is the moment that, you know, it's a learning lesson. A lot of people, they think that they're above the game, mm -hmm. and then like he go to a team that actually pay him some ridiculous money, and he thought he was above that contract, or you know, to the point where he was untouchable. That you know, he can get himself out of that deal. You know what I'm saying? And to land himself another one, not knowing. That you know what I'm saying? That you plan your hand and you plan yourself and you basically end up with nothing. You know nothing what I'm saying? At, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so now uh what they're doing is they're using him as a you know, mm -hmm. like yeah, as an example, yeah, you know what I'm saying, to show that, like, mm -hmm. look, man, you don't never talk about your owner, you don't never talk about, you know, um, uh, who you better than or who what team you above who you don't want to play for be happy that you get in this deal and be happy that you actually in this league and mm -hmm. you know he 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 got another chance and then you know what i'm saying he still thought he was above the game you know mm -hmm. and that's what happened so uh uh, uh things ability but you know for the 12 million that y'all talking about I don't think they're gonna give him that. I think they're gonna probably get him some along in the three million range. They, they, if they're gonna take a minimum. risk on him, believe, Ooh. yeah, believe that they're going he to the take, they're, sure. they're going to get a profit. They know that they're gonna make a lot of money off of him, but they want to do it. Yeah. They want to do it at a point to where they really don't want to give him a chance. But if they do. It's going to be like one of them deals. Uh, I got an offer that you can't refuse type, you know, situation. So I okay. got to give him yeah. the veterans minimum and let him earn that next contract. Like, you feel me? Yeah, Whatever. I agree. Up, I agree. The veterans minimum. If he performs that year, then you cash him out the next year. But I'm giving him the vet minimum because I know nobody else is going to pay him more than that. Probably. Yeah. Right. That's exactly. Right. And that's why I feel like they're going to get hit. They're going to undercut him. Even yeah. though he, it, cause, he, cause it's it's almost I, like really three million. Though, where he at? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like yeah. three million, three yeah. million, or nothing. Three what million, gonna no. do it. Yeah, or, or three, three, three million, million. Or no mills. He gonna yeah. go with that money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I, I actually, believe that for uh, hopes to uh, restructure. You know what I'm saying? Later down the line. But mm -hmm. any more thoughts on that? Nah, no, I don't no. want to talk about AB no more. AB. Man, hey B, man, keep your head on, bro. Please keep yeah, your head on, man. There's please. no reason why you should be in the league. 
But um, just the last little football topic before we get in uh, Mike Tyson real quick, then uh, Kanye. But um, the the <laughs> the Washington football it's so goofy, bro. Yeah, like, bro, they they the uh, the the former uh, Washington Red, you know what I'm saying, wasn't Whatever. able to come up in the name within time before um before they had to. So now they just went with the rock, the Washington football team. So now that that's what they'll be known for as this season. I don't know when they're going to be able to go back in and change it. I want to get y'all thoughts on such a stupid name and uh, just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, just such a stupid organization, especially with all the with all the uh, um, alleged uh, accusations that came out last week about the owner, uh, the organization pimping out mm-hmm. the cheerleaders, having them out. Over in the islands, getting buck, getting butt naked for uh, investors and stuff. So I <laughs> just, just everything around the Washington football team is just ridiculous right now. So I want to yeah. get y'all thoughts on that. We don't got to be on this one real quick, but um, what do y'all expect out of them, man? Uh, Cook, what, what's your thoughts on this? I just told my pops the other day that the Washington football team can't catch a break. At all. Besides the cheerleaders and then the whole, th- what, two, three years you've been going through the name change. And then you come with the Washington football team and then go into the season with that. The squad can get. have no kind of positive morale whatsoever because you're playing for the Washington football team. Mm-hmm. I will go out to the field so lackluster every day knowing that's on my jersey, knowing that's on my pay stub. I don't even know. Hey, I don't even on. know. The football, it may just be Washington on the jet. I don't even know if they that's couldn't. Fine. Find them. That's sick. They should have named it DC something, bro. DC sounds way cool. bro. I, I saw a whole <laughs> bunch of mock ups on Twitter and Instagram. They could have what of them. Something. Oh, they would have watched the football. Been a, team. They would have been the DC Bisons. The guy got how That would have been convenient. <laughs> that would have been convenient. Yeah. It would have worked, though. Nah. Trying to get the black vote back or trying to get any kind of person of color. Uh, to, to to rock with the uh the, the Washington football team. Yeah. That would have worked. Yeah. Nate, what's your thoughts on this, man? What, what's your thoughts with all the stupidity going out uh going on mm-hmm. in Washington? Mm-hmm. Out of all the stupid things that they've done, the decision for them to keep the name Washington football team is probably the smartest thing that they could have done right now, right? <laughs> the, reason, the reason that I that, bro. <laughs> uh, you don't want to rush into a name that you don't like. And two, if you want to get input from the people that, you know, saying Redskins affected, if you want to get the proper input, that might take a little bit, you know? Mm-hmm. So honestly, I think Washington football team, it's like, whatever, like the name will suck, you know, it sucks, but hey, what is a clipper? What is, you know, like, well, really, what is that at the end of the day? So, no. take your, figure out what your next mascot is going to be. Because I think in the NFL, it's a little bit more important because fans are a little more festive in the NFL. So you got to kind of have something, you know, like a Viking or a Ram, you know, something that's an actual real thing. But mm-hmm. I'm not going to say this is the worst decision considering all the other dumb stuff that they're doing right now. I feel it. I feel it. Kendall, what's your thoughts on this? Uh stupidity <laughs> man I, I feel like i feel like y'all been a little hard on washington i think it's stupid that somebody gonna put a time limit on when they gonna have a name like let, let them you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like let let them you know what i'm saying take their time then when they ready then come up with a name you know something you, good though something something proper for like that represents them you feel me that's why i say yeah. rushing into the worst but decision. why does everything has to have like a time limit? Like even yeah, if they want to, but you got to know that like that's, that's just like, like, society. Uh, like the merch and everything like that. Like you got companies yeah, that like, like, season, right? Right? You're not Washington, oh. Washington football team merch. Like wh- who's the mascot? Bro, they is. still they Ooh. still got time, bro. That's the part that I'm trying to say. Like yeah, it don't it. have to be. It don't have to be. You know what I'm saying? Like done right at this very moment you know what i'm saying they should be able to they should be able to you know take a take a little bit of time you know what i'm saying come up with a name but like i don't i don't think that you know them actually not allowing them to have a a name is even smart you know what i'm saying that's less revenue for the league well the thing is nobody's nobody's going to recognize them anymore they're just the washington who yeah nobody 
Cold but their color scheme for me is distinct in the league. Like nobody else got their little color scheme. Like you'll still relate the colors, everything. Like people in DC, even though they suck, like it's still very much a, a Washington football club or football mm -hmm. team. Now, you feel me? Like people in DC love the former Redskins. You feel me? So they still gonna go to games. But like he said, you know, I'm just you know they don't have to rush into it. But at one season at max. Like you gotta have the name. You gotta have the but, name for your but, either mid season. Hey, Nate, or season. Hey, Nate, Nate, but Nate, here's the thing, Nate. Uh, they actually have the colors based on what the Redskins. You right. I mean, you know what I'm saying. So I don't think that they're gonna even keep that. You feel what I'm saying? They got a whole rebrand. Yeah, and so yeah. like the so so like the the thing that like why I'm saying like it's stupid that they actually putting a very restricted timeline on them is because. Next year, you're going to have to get to relearn that whole team. You feel what I'm right. saying? And it's like you got to get the – like you you go as Washington football team, and then the following year after that, now they're going to have a, a name change and it basically have to start all the way over on Brandon. Yeah. I, I, I just think, like you all said, I, like I, I feel bad for the players. That, like I feel bad for Chase Young, uh, second round – I mean second – uh, pick in the uh, draft last year, Ohio State stud. You got um, they still, still coming in the same way though. Yeah, but Haskins, all them guys. Like I feel sorry for them guys. Like you should, you should definitely have a better uh, experience in an organization than that. And I, I feel like the NFL is gonna get to a point the NFL really gonna have to step in and uh have make force him to sell that team because um you, yeah. you got all the all the other um shareholders stakeholders in the team that already put their their stake and stuff up for sale just because of the allegations and stuff that came out within this last week so i feel like the nfl would definitely be in there being uh getting there and definitely intervene with uh what's going on but just to keep moving man two more topics mike tyson versus rory jones jr september 12th man matchup of the fifty year olds, man, we we got to we about to see what hat was was about to happen, man. We got on the undercard, we got Nate Robertson versus Jake Paul, so it, we we about to. I want to get y'all thoughts on this, uh, Tyson. I'm gonna start real quick. I think Tyson gonna knock his ass out. I'm sorry, <laughs> Tyson gonna knock his ass out, bro. Tyson been looking like anytime you training and just draws, it's over with. It's over. With. <laughs> <laughs> in a, in a tidy whities bro he's been training in tidy whities for, for like yeah, three months bro. it's over Gosh. with you you ain't about to beat tyson and like bro it, you you tweet you you about to fight fight the tweak tyson you know what i'm saying like he's about to be right. tweaked. so i don't i don't expect roy to do anything um i don't know i, I i'm definitely gonna tune in yeah <laughs> i don't know why i'm gonna just, watch but i'm the foolishness it just, Definitely watch. It look like Tyson hands are scary, bro. Like I just want to see who's gonna be on the other side of that. So, um, right. let me get your thoughts on that, man, real quick. Nate, what's your thoughts on uh, Tyson coming back to fight Rory Jones Jr.? Like you said, bro, Tyson gonna knock him out. I got my money on Mike, bro. You feel know I me? Mean? No disrespect <laughs> to Roy, but y'all both fifty, and I ain't never seen Roy. a fifty year old. I ain't never seen a, a fifty year old throw punches the way that Mike do. Not to say that I've been around too many 50 year olds that's, that's boxing anyway, but yeah. you know, I've never seen a 50 year old throw a punch that this 50 year old Mike Tyson throwing. So, all my money's on Mike, right. and uh, I think the undercard will actually be a little bit more exciting. You know, it's a little bit more of a fair matchup between Nate Robinson and Jake Paul, two mm -hmm. at least they're in like the same size, same age demographic, and like that's an age that can still be like fun and athletic. You know, the 50 year olds fighting. You know, I don't really want to see one of my mans get Alzheimer's or something like that, get punched so hard by Mike yeah, like, Tyson. Damn, they like this. This like, a punch from Mike right now. At this age, you feel me? It, 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 you that, know, they, might wear, they might the have way, to wear. A hair, bro, bro, the way he hit in the back, it's scary. They you may have to have a paramedic that. right there. They better. You may have to have a paramedic right there, bro. I ain't even gonna lie. And a neurosurgeon. They better have. They better have everybody on deck, bro. Because it's not gonna look good for for Roy if, if if he end up losing. It ain't gonna look good. And they old niggas too. They may throw their arm the wrong way and knock their shoulder out of place. So you never know what's gonna go on. <laughs> not man, Tyson. Let me, bro. Not <laughs> Tyson. Not, let me get your thoughts on this, man. What, what do you? What's your thoughts on uh Tyson 
coming back to fight Rory Jones Jr. If anything, I'm more concerned about their conditioning levels. Can they? Can they? Can they go to twelve rounds again? I no, really it's, don't it's know. Eight. It's eight. How long is it? It's eight. Are they even gonna make it? To I eight? feel like I give it. I, I really give it five before somebody yeah. does either fall out or Mike don't put Roy to sleep. One of the two. Mike, Mike, Mike gonna dim a couple of niggas' lights in there. Like, <laughs> oh, bro, it's gonna get ugly. It's gonna get ugly quick too. You know, you know, I encourage the cowardly dog when I used to say, "Get some shut eye." That right. <laughs> nigga gonna get some shut eye in there. You feel me? <laughs> For real. He's gonna get the best of his life, bro. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, bro. Free Ray Jones. Let me get you ready. This man can deal. I think Mike Tyson gonna knock. I think not Mike Tyson gonna knock Roy Jones out. And I don't think that Roy mm. Jones is. He's not big enough to keep him back. You know what I'm saying? He's not okay. powerful enough to keep him never off. Him. So, so therefore, you you know you got to look at. Uh, Roy Jones' previous fights, man, he been getting knocked out. You know what I'm saying, and making yeah. his record look worse than what it really is what because he's fighting as, is. yeah, because like like how he like, I think he only lost two, maybe two or three prime fights, which is Antonio Tarver, and then one he actually won and they disqualified. Him. But man, he, he out later. Tarver beat his ass twice, though. Yeah, twice. Out, That's what I'm uh, saying. Twice. So, so yeah. three. I say uh, about three, three or four fights that you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. that he was kind of like in the prime a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right oh, now, God. he's been getting knocked out, and then he's trying to fight somebody like uh, Mike Tyson. Man, it's not gonna end well. Man, I, I don't want to see it because, like, yeah. he's I, I like. <laughs> When I first heard about Mike Tyson trying to fight, I'm like, he's going to get knocked out because yeah. he's older and then he's been knocked out a few times. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, like, these these other fighters, they're a little more athletic. But then when I hear hear that it's a possibility that it's Roy Jones, I'm like, he's going to kill him. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Mike, I don't even want to see it. Mike really think he's slick, bro. He about to bring a whole nother level to this boxing game. Like he's seen what Floyd did. Like, damn, Floyd just made nine million dollars in three minutes fighting a little Japanese boy. Boy, I'm about to fight all these, all these uh former previous top tier fighters in the heavyweight division, and I'm gonna knock all their ass out because <laughs> I'm Mike. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I'm Mike. I, I think it would have been a little, uh, a little more uh, interesting if it was uh, Bernard Bernard Hopkins. Dude, I, I feel like good. he would have did Bernard ass though. Even Yo, though he Bernard, did, he, he but he's fair, a smart bro, fighter. Bro. Yeah, he's a smart fighter. So yeah. it, it depends on the shape. And Bernard, Bernard, Bernard took some, some hits. <laughs> you hear me? Bernard <laughs> took some <laughs> took some shots that that put him down. He got a stronger chin, yeah, but yeah, I don't it, know, bro. Mike gonna put everybody to sleep. It's gonna be interesting. I give it four or five rounds max. Just because yeah. I feel like first few rounds, he's going to try to tag him, get back a little bit, tag him, get out. But once he gets any type of tired, that right hook is going to be so I think <laughs> Mike be going for the gold in round one. It's about to be round one. Yeah. When Mike used to knock niggas out and help niggas up. Like Mike used to. Jeez. Like, bro, Mike, it got to a point Mike was knocking niggas out and kissing niggas on the forehead. Like, bro, it's good. <laughs> And you just said something that made no, you just real. said something that made me uh really realize something. Yeah, he's going to hurt him so bad, right? I said that part. He's going to hurt him so bad because you got to think of the opportunity this presents, this brings. If yeah. he knocks Roy Jones out, just think of all the money that's going to come his way for a real bout. You know what hey, I'm what, saying? What, so what, like what, a Deontay what, Wilder. What, 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 like they'd love to see Deontay Watt, huh? Go ahead. I, I don't think I don't think he'll fight like no young boys. I think he is staying oh, like that, that that last little tier of them, like the ones that's fading out. Uh Shannon yeah. Briggs, that let's go, champ. Like yeah, let's go, champ. Yeah, yeah like let's go, champ. You might hurt him so bad that they make this type of, this type of event illegal for this age, bro. You know what I mean? Like he might hurt him that bad that they been this fit, bro. For 50 year olds, you fucking like <laughs> bro, that's funny, bro. He that bad. The thing that's gonna be so crazy, bro. This shit may do thirty million dollars. For sure, like this shit may do thirty, like easily. Like just because you got you got Jake Paul, you got Nate Robinson. 
So you got the the millennials and the young bulls that's gonna check in. Then you got the OGs that's like nigga Jones versus Mike. Nigga, we ain't never seen that. Nigga, what? Fine. Fine. But it's just gonna be crazy. What if Roy Jones knock his ass completely out? It's, I don't that's know. What's not happening. Roy, yeah, no, that's somebody one of them. It, it, it yeah, ain't gonna be for both. Sure. For sure. Nah. Right. Let, let's get into this last one, man, because it's a lot been going on, man. My boy didn't 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 ran for president and all type of stuff, man. I just give me just a Yeezy reaction just on everything, man. I uh I'm a, I'm a who who wanna go? I, me, I, I, I got so, you. Go ahead, go ahead. Hey, in, man. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna just say this, man. I hope that you know. Like, you know, it's funny to talk about Kanye, but it's from real talk. He really got mental issues. That's not an excuse for all his behavior. You feel yeah. me? Because I'm not going to sit here and act like I've, you know, I've always excused it. But, bro, he really, like, needs actual mental help. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, whether it's the pills, you know, I don't necessarily recommend pills or nothing like that. But, you know, he doesn't need this media scrutiny. He don't need this media attention that he's brought on himself. I'll, I'll admit that. You feel me? He brought himself by dating somebody mm-hmm. like the Kardashian they show run for president so it's hard to make you feel bad for him but what i saw from his little campaign rally is that's like a cry for help you know what i'm saying like if i ever seen one like the way he was boohooing but then also you know like running his mouth at a black woman you feel me for wearing a mask like that's you feel me that's low-key mental issues so yeah. you know I, I can't really feel bad too bad for him but i do hope he get the proper help but this whole presidency bullshit needs to stop bro you feel me that's some bullshit bro and his family his camp never let him do this to himself because he embarrassing himself facto man cook let me get your thoughts on that man so look i got a friend that suffers from uh, bipolar disorder this looks like exactly what i was going through with him when he before he got um diagnosed like Mm -hmm. it's it's almost identical Mm -hmm. so for me kind of dealing with that, I can kind of see why I can't act like that because I call it the two eyes, irate and irrational. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just flying off at the mouth, doing whatever at any point in time. It, my, it has no kind of rational thought behind it. It's just that day. Yeah. So Kanye kind of needs to go get in the tuck somewhere to really get some mental help before this goes too far left, before we can't bring it back at all. Yeah. For real. And I'm going a, I'm to a let Kendall uh, end us off, so I'm going to chime in real quick. Man, it's just, like y'all said, man, it's sad, man. You know, Ye, Ye being who he is and being what he didn't like, just to see the type of music he was able to to put out and to to the uh, success with fashion, being able to sell over $5 billion worth of clothes consistently, like, it's 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 sad, bro. And I, and I understand, like, bipolar is definitely you know what i'm saying it's it's a mental condition that that's definitely shouldn't be taken um lightly you know what i'm saying and i i, I hopefully i hope he's taking this medicine because that's literally it's just a chemical imbalance you know what i'm saying typically those mm-hmm. people that have those uh type of issues are, are fine if they stay the course with their medicine but man it's, it's just sad bro and he i don't know bro he he's not totally to blame like i don't blame him totally for everything that's going on but he just he just gotta watch his mouth man and, and know how potent it is you know what i'm saying like his his words speak volumes across the masses mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and when you out here just saying anything just popping off you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like with, with with bringing meek in here Talking about Kim was out of right. for five billion. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, talking, talking about, crazy, bro. Talking hey, about Kanye how said it. one true thing, one true thing in his rant, and that was that Get Out What's was that? about him. You feel me? And that's a fact. Bro. Yeah, Kardashians have been nothing but trouble for black men. But I, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Yeah, he, in the place and I, he just he just needs some help, bro. I'm I'm happy to see. Uh, Real friends that was close to him really pull up on him like Dave Chappelle. Dave pulled Chappelle. Up. Yeah. Uh, uh, damn, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Dame Dash pulled up on him, and I'm I'm happy that that those guys really went in there and checked. You know what I'm saying? Checked in with him because that's what needs to happen in these situations. You know what I'm saying? Like if you yeah. if you really around him and you love him like that, definitely go check in on him because, like you said, he is bipolar and he may just get to going off at the mouth saying something irrational, but 
uh, he just got to understand, bro, it's, it's uh, reactions to every action nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's words mm-hmm. and stuff is out there permanently. You know what I'm saying? So you can't go back yeah. on what you said. It's, it's law. And just as a people. And we kind of like talked about this last week. And I, I really want to just highlight this again, bro. Stop looking at celebrities to to live your life. You know what I'm saying? And, and find a guidance to life. Cause half of them don't have it figured out. You know what I'm saying? Well, a lot of them don't have it figured out. They still regular humans, bro. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to understand who you looking up to. Not saying that he isn't somebody you should look up to, but whenever you in a situation where he says something like that online and it's like, everybody has it immediately. You got news. The uh, Atlanta news was talking about the shit. Like, bro, that's lame as hell. Yeah. Especially if you know his condition and I'm not right. saying to, Get shoot him any bail because he didn't say some clown shit like the Harriet Tubman shit, the, the slavery was a choice shit. He didn't say some clown shit, but it's like, yeah. dude, we got to stop giving these type of people that's saying this attention seeking dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Attention because that's what they yeah. feed off of. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I put that on the people. You know what I'm saying? That's like, bro. That shit lame as hell, bro. Like you got you got to watch where you, where you putting your attention to, because that's only people just gonna keep doing the dumb shit. Like, all right, this what they talking about. This what I'm gonna say. You know what I'm saying? Then it just ain't look good because it's like, all right, he said all that wild shit, and it's like, shit, I got an album coming. Fuck, man. man. Like man. that blew me, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Did you just spaz out for an album rollout? <laughs> like, like, what, like, what did. Did. like, that's the type of stuff that makes it hard to even give him yeah. the consideration of it is bipolar yeah. because that is a real condition. You know, that's yeah. not for me to talk about because I don't experience that. However, yeah. you know, then you make it look like it's a media play, and like I can't yeah. rock with that. It's like you acting. Yeah. There's people out there with real mental issues that don't get the the credit that they need because they may not be yeah. seen right. by thousands of people. You feel me? But yeah. now you know. You doing it for millions of people on Twitter. I don't know if the, whether you actually having a bipolar episode or are you trying to get album sales. Yeah, like, what are so, you trying to sell that album? Like, nigga, you yay. You don't need to. You could drop an album, sell the album without, you, without telling nobody, and it's gonna go platinum. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know, bro. It, I don't know. Like, it's a mix of things. Like, it's a mix of the clown. What'd you say? What'd you say? Ooh, All right, I, but right. I, I said it's like a mix of things, bro. It's a mix of the clown shit. It's a mix of just uh, the Kardashians. It's a mix of him not having his mom. It's a mix of bipolarness. It's a mix of all that shit. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? It, it just gets in the way sometimes when he just do the irrational shit. Then it's like, all right. He kind of, it seemed like he making the money play off the irrational shit. Which yeah. technically not irrational if it's really bipolarness. But it's like, dude, you, you can't, you know what I'm saying? Profit off of mental, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> mental health. Yeah, for real, for real, for real. Like, bro, I ain't trying to hit all that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna let the OG man just wrap us up on this and give us his thoughts about everything and just uh give us some guidance in here. <clears throat> all right. So look, man. Um, as far as with me, I don't really get into that because uh, Micah, like I was uh, telling you, media manipulation, propaganda. You know what I'm saying? When they have uh, a certain way that they feel about you, you know, they will make you look in a certain perspective. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And you want you to look. So, so I'm not going to I'm not going to really talk about what Kanye said or what he did, because mm-hmm. like like Dave Chappelle said, you know, uh, at one point, Martin, you know, was looking crazy to the public and stuff like that. And he was just yeah. basically saying that sometimes, you know, other people are sick. It, it ain't it because yeah. Martin was one of the strongest people that he knew. You know what I'm saying? And for him to check on uh, Kanye West, you know, just kind of might signify that, you know, that he yeah. understand that it's something that's more deeper than what they yeah. what they actually show. Mm-hmm. But just as black man, like like I said, I salute Dave for that. And you know what I'm saying? As black man, we just got to make sure we do that. You know what I'm saying? More often, just check in on your bro, even if he not doing something to, to what Kanye doing and not really having like a, a, a outburst or anything. Just check in on your people, man. But keep going, Kendall. Yeah. So like one thing that we have to do as uh, black individuals, right? 
we have to stop looking to to the media and acting like they are friends like they want to uh represent us in the best perspective because they have not been doing that ever you know what i'm saying so what we have to do is really see the facts because when you like a person like kanye west that that says anything that he wants to if you already deem him as a bipolar individual guess Mm -hmm. what any truth that he tell you they can automatically say oh he's just oh he's just in this moment he's having this his you know what i'm saying so don't do that just find out what's what's real what's right you know what i'm saying because we know that there's a lot of sound bites that you know that they actually take and make you look like you just you know just this awful person when and it when you actually could have been asked a question about something or you could have uh uh said something and then they just basically snipped out the whole context of it you know the full context Mm -hmm. and made it seem like you said something that you didn't so all i'm saying is um you know far as with the kanye west you Maybe also got to give in the media. You can't give them no no fuel to. to he, he gives them, yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. But like, uh, he, he, you know, maybe it might be a, you know a strategy of his. But like y'all said, you know, uh, Michael, he's so five billion dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like work yeah. for apparel and stuff like that. Like man, this dude, and they not just taking advantage of him. You know what I'm saying? They like which I feel like you what well, it kind of is because if he can five million, five billion, and he ain't he's, a billionaire, they no, definitely he's worth a billionaire. He's a billionaire. He's oh, you're a billionaire? Yeah, okay, so yeah, yeah, so he's he's doing you know what he's supposed to, but like I said, man, uh we just gotta um you know just really learn how to be patient and really see what's what, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's my take on that. Yeah. I, like I said, man, pray, prayers to him. You feel me? If he definitely, definitely with it, you know what I'm saying? The bipolar this prayers to you for sure. But you know what I'm saying? It, it's definitely time out for the for the uh for the little wig shit, bro. Like not saying that I'm not speaking about bipolar this for everybody at home. I'm speaking about just the, the silly shit in regards to like slavery was a choice or the Harriet Tubman shit. Then coming with an album. No, I don't want to hear an album. I want to hear you get help. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Nate, yeah, Nate yeah. said something key. That's when that's when Nate said said something key. Basically, you know, when he was saying all that and then talked about an album. So maybe, you know, it's, it's to- one of those moments where it's strategic. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? To get but everybody even to talk about strategy, that shit lame. And I want like, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm no Kanye ain't listening to listening, but I want the people to know that if that's what he if that's what he's uh like using the the mental awareness mental health stuff to to further sell some more shit that's lame as hell you know what I'm saying and I'm not rocking with that you know what I'm saying sure. like like I said if it's genuinely he just need help and stuff like that I'm for all that you feel me I, I never you know what I'm saying shy uh uh shy away from somebody that need mental help like that's over with you know what i'm saying I, i'm i'm standing with that regardless mm-hmm. but as far as like the other little lame shit maybe it's i don't know maybe i'm i'm hoping it's just something that just brought them happiness like you know what i'm gonna just release some music because that's my happy space and i'm i'm for it if that's that you know what i'm saying but if you just trying to do all that to backhand profit off something like bro that's lame as hell and you uh basically just playing with people with emotions, bro. You know what I'm saying? You, you profiting off of emotions. But uh, any more thoughts on that? Like you said, uh, prayers for Kanye. You feel me? Like, like you know, if you if you pray for your man, you feel me? You see somebody going through something, if you yeah. feel like somebody that's a positive influence, pray for him. You feel me? That's all you can do if we don't know him. Yeah. Fact though, man. But no, nah, man, I appreciate y'all checking in with us today, man. You know, we got the family in the building. Um, man, we just make sure y'all go check us out. YouTube, National Sports Chat, IG, National Sports Chat, Spotify, National Sports Chat. Uh, we all over, man. Make sure you tune in. We dropping new content every day. Uh, AAU teams, if y'all out there active and y'all want us to cover y'all, get at us. We out here. Best believe we going to pull up. Um, high school football, if you know what I'm saying, if you need us to cover you this uh, fall, if y'all having a season out here, let us know. We pulling up. 
um, everything, bro. We just pull up. That's that's the only thing we do over here is pull up, man. We frontline individuals, you feel me? So make sure y'all check us out, man. Keep rocking with us, and we're going to keep rocking with y'all. Shout out to TOV, man. This whole production right now is being yeah. shot by TOV. Shout out to them. Go over there. Tell them that National Sports Chat said hello. Um, we And we just going to keep hitting y'all with, with endless content on National Sports Chat, man. Make sure y'all just stay tuned to the YouTube um, stay tuned into the IG. We got something special for y'all coming. Um, make sure y'all go over here, follow Nate, follow Cook, follow Kendall, even though you know what I'm saying. You can get at him on the on the National Sports Chat page, National Sports Chat page if you really want to get at him. You know what I'm saying? But we'll we'll put his we'll put his personal IG on there. But definitely get at him. You know what I'm saying? Uh but nah, any uh y'all got anything else for our wrap us up? Get us on out of here. Nah, not today. With us, man. Yeah, man. Mike and Friends podcast. Make sure you go over there, follow our uh IG, uh, follow National Sports Chat, like I said, man. And we checking in and checking out Mike and Friends National Sports Chat. We about yeah. it. Uh, yeah. You can't understand how I just keep killing, man. I'm from the South Rim, spinning like selling fans, gambling with life, no complaining about the deal of hand. Back when niggas used to ride around the dip set. Now these cops will shoot you on your live. That's a killer cam. Fly nigga with some green. I think I'm Peter Pan. Got a dark and yellow lady. I'm a Steelers fan. All black is beautiful. I did it. You can do it too. Where the chopper singing, but the streets ain't a musical. I'm from where the shooters might show up to your funeral. And cry tears of pain like you wasn't the one to do it to you. Oh, I'm a threat to niggas. Go get your weapon. You scared to box with a legend, nigga. Keeping the essence. I'm better than all of niggas that you reference. It's highly disrespectful. When it's hard to call you king with all the feminine jokes. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah. We up What's out. Up?